What's happening guys? Happy Easter. Hope you had a wonderful break. We are back straight into the pacemaker. I've been back for a few days now and I have done a few bits and pieces to get it ready for stringers. The first thing I did was just finish off the hull. So there was this 500 mil strip to finish off. So that's all done. So that's to the back of the stern now. And I've also done a bit of tabbing in. I've done about four layers of 1708. Uh, with choppy either side. I've also beefed up the bow as well because we are going to be putting this Jarrah piece back in so we can strengthen it up when it gets uh, winched onto the trailer. So I've just put a couple of layers of the resin on that so it can soak in. Once that dries up, uh, give it a quick sand, epoxy it into place and then uh, glass it all back in. So I think I put about four or five layers of 1708 and a few layers of chop as well. So basically we just got to give the whole hull um, a quick grind up because obviously it's been a week or so and then we can start cutting up for some stringers. So pretty exciting stuff. Let's get straight into it. Boom, that is what we're left with. Ah, she looks pretty cool. So quick grind like I was saying, so we can get straight into stringers. Damn, I'm pretty happy with that, that looks cool. Alrighty. I did buy a, a, a new little tool, which is a, what you call a self-leveling cross line, which theoretically is exactly what it says. It throws lines, it self-levels, and basically gets everything square. So this is that little instrument right here. Probably the best hundred bucks I've ever spent. Honestly, it's just making this so much easier than, uh, than I could imagine with string lines. Now you guys are probably wondering how you get the stringer height from the hull. So once you've set up your laser and it shoots the, the horizontal line, you can actually get a tape measure and measure down, which will give you the height where the stringer has to be. So what I've done is I've gone along every 500 mil and given a height to the top of that line all the way to the front of the boat. So you can see it gradually gets smaller as you get to the front because the hull is coming up for, uh, to the front of the bow here. You can see in these shots here where the floor is perfectly square and parallel with the keel at the moment and that is where we're going to be running the top of our stringers so our floor is perfectly square. Obviously being foam stringers, they're very, very easy to cut, very easy to trim. The foam stringers are more so basically just a, a mock-up or the form work to our fiberglass stringers. There's gonna be a lot of glass, a lot of layers. So this is more or less so we can get the shape, um, get the foundation of the shape of the stringers and then we can start glassing. The transom is obviously not flat. It is on an angle. So what I've done is I've got that angle by using it with a bit of cardboard. As you can see here, me sitting it up against the hull, it sits nice and flush up against that transom there. Now, like I was saying before, I've got marks of the height every uh, four to 500 mil, which will indicate the, the cut needed to get that stringer height perfectly level with the line across the hull. Mark these two on this cardboard and then I know from that mark it's going to be 500 mil to each individual mark. Now there's definitely many ways to do this but I thought that this uh, procedure worked quite well. The only thing I changed was make the marks a little closer together so you got a more of an accurate cut at the start but uh, a little bit of trimming did me fine.
main two boards in. Now I've cut some extra foam at 800 mil, which is basically exactly the width that we need it to be inside the channel here. And I'm just using a couple of toothpicks just to push it in place and just hold it in there so we can get the correct measurements for the top of this here. Okay, so the two main stringers that I wanted to get done in this episode are now complete. So they're give or take five or 10 mil to, to where I want them to be at the desired height. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're just going to glue them together. We're gonna to give them a quick sand on the bottom and on the top, smooth off the edges as well and uh, get them ready for some fiberglass on the table to make sure the stringers uh, dry up nice and straight, sanding it all back and getting it all level, gluing them into the boat and then we can um, tap them in. So that's where we're at at the moment. Now you gotta wipe that off. One at a time, Chichi. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Twitch is no good when it's pointing at the floor. <laughs> All, right. All right. So what we're going to do now is actually just give them a quick glue together just with a little bit of resin. And then once they're glued together, I can just quickly sand them just to get them a little bit more smooth. Now this episode has been recorded on the iPhone uh, because the GoPro and the camera get a bit funny with the lights at night time. So hopefully the quality is there, but I do want to touch base on a few things. Now, you just seen me do a layer of chop on one of the sides of the stringers. Um, I have now put them back in the boat. I'm just about to line them up so they're all nice and straight so I can put a bit of tabbing between the joins. I don't want a butt join there. So um, the foam does come in two meter lengths, I think, or 2.2 meter lengths. Uh, so I did have to do it in two sections, but I will tab that out. So then they dry nice and straight and then I can start laminating. So the reason why we went foam stringers and not ply, because I'm sure someone in the comments will mention it, uh, is because back in the day, I'd say the ply or the wood was used as the strength, and then they just put a couple of layers of chop just to seal it uh, from getting any exposed water on it. Um, we're now relying on the fiberglass for its strength. So this is gonna have almost five, 10 mil thick of fiberglass around the foam uh, as a strengthening agent, whereas the foam is more um, just to shape, shape the, the, the stringer itself. So it's not there for any strength whatsoever. It's more or less just to get the shape for the fiberglass. So that's why we went with that method. So that's the reason why. Now we're just gonna get it straightened up so we can start laminating next week. So hopefully you guys stick around for that one. I'll see you in the next episode. Cheers for watching.